Hey guys, welcome to the cutting and interfacing video for the Glamour Clutch, which is what we are doing for our second swapsie. Um, I have picked my two fabrics. Now I'm going to be doing the first one in just fabric, um, and then I'll probably do a live video where I use vinyl as well. But I just thought if you're a super beginner and or you don't have access to vinyl, let's do a super cute fabric one. Um, so these are just what I had in a cupboard. And I think they match really nicely because I like green. Um, so it's just a quilting cotton. Nothing. Oh, okay. I wonder if I'll have enough. Well, I guess we're going to find out. All right. So I'm going to put the lining pieces aside. Uh, so this piece as well, this is just um, a tracing guide for your corners. Uh, so you don't actually need to cut this piece out. But I did still laminate it and I will show you how to use it. Uh, if you're more of an advanced sewer, you may not need to use it. Oh, by the way, I am loving my new cutting table. Everything fits. It's amazing. Right, so let's start. I always start, when I've got a piece like this and I'm not sure if it's going to fit, I always start with the biggest piece. Um, so this is fabric is going to be piece A, uh, and then this will be the lining. So... I'm going to stick it, I never cut, and I never use where the perforated holes are in the side because I don't like it. But I am going to stick it down as far as I can um, because I don't like to waste fabric and you never know what else you could get out of this. So I'm just using a pen on the back. Um, it's just a four pen, there's nothing special about it. It won't erase, but I'm also using a dark fabric. So if I slipped, you're also not going to see it. If you're using a panel, um, you would center your piece here. And another really good, if you like using a lot of panels and stuff, what you can actually do is cut out um, a square right in the center and then re-laminate it so it's like a window and you can see where you're doing. All right, so it says cut one of those. And then that's a lining. So the top band and the top lining. Cut two of piece A. All right, so this is fabric A. So let's cut this. So I'm just going to continue on where I had the straight line. So I've got a straight line there, so now I don't have to draw as many. It's also keeping nice and straight along the edge. And I actually think I might end up getting a mini wallet to go with this out of the other side. If this keeps up. All right, so it says cut two of those. And cut two of these. So I just lined them all up in like a big line there. Another thing you could have done if you wanted to is get a ruler and rule the line all the way up the edge and then you can just run them against it. Um, whatever floats your boat. Okay so that is the back and all the little pieces. And then I've just got to do my fancy little front piece. And now it's not going to fit there, so we're going to come and put it on this side. Like so. And I'm just pushing, putting pressure on the pattern so that it doesn't lift, so I don't draw underneath it. So I just move my hands along as I need to. You could also use pattern weights, although I don't find them as effective once you've laminated it. Okay, grab my favorite scissors. So these scissors, if you've never watched any of my videos before, these are the Fiskars spring loaded scissors that Spotlight sell. Uh, they do go on sale randomly and they are amazing. And if you can save up and get them, I highly recommend it. It takes a lot of the pressure out of your hand while you're cutting. Because they spring back open, you're not then using your hand to open and close. You're only just squishing. And because of the way it grips, it's just comfortable. I really like these scissors. Okay. So there is one piece. And so then to do this, you start at the bottom and you can just cut all the way up. And I haven't finished cutting, 
Um, but I've just got a couple of little bits to go. So I don't necessarily trace everything and then cut. I'm not that methodical. I cut when I feel like it and then I'll just go back and trace more. Okay, so that bit's rubbish. I have no use for that. Um, I've bought my bin over, so it's just at the end of the table. So I can actually just brush stuff off the table and it lands in the bin. Uh, you could also use a rotary cutter and a ruler. Uh, normally I would drag that over, but you're currently sitting on the cutting board. So I'll just stick to scissors. Always when you're using scissors, try and use the full lot of the blade. It's less work for your hand. I see a lot of people do this. It really annoys me. Not because of, I don't know why it annoys me really. Mainly because you should use your whole hand, it won't hurt your hand so much. Alright, so there's all those pieces. Then we also need our little tab. Now, if you're doing the crossbody version, cut three of these. Otherwise, oh look at that, that fits perfectly there. So you do one if you're just doing the little tassel holder. Or you do three if you're going to do the strap. Now, my first bag, I'm just going to do the tassel holder. Um, so I just need one of these. Obviously, I didn't think it through very well. I probably should have had stuff with more, and then I would have done a matching strap out of this. So that's my little tassel holder bit there. So now we go on to the lining. So that's, that's all that's left, but I can still get um, a flap for a wallet out of that. So I'm not going to turf that bit. That bit's big enough for me to keep. It's going to live in the box that's under my iron. Okay. So now this fabric's directional. Um, so that's something that you may or may not want to think about. I'm going to have vertical lines because that's the way I like it. So we need one of these to line our pocket now this would be a really good opportunity if you've bought some of the waterproof lining to do that um, because then you don't have to interface as much I did actually pick a set that had it but then I thought a lot of people don't have it so I may as well show you how to do it cotton first so the next bag that I do will most likely have um, waterproof canvas and vinyl just to be different Cut one lining fabric out of this one. Now it's not going to fit there because it's not long enough. So we're going to come down and I'm not going to put it there because then that's wasting all of here. So I'm going to come down to here. Line it up along the edge but making sure we're not using the little perforated hole section. Because there's only quite a small seam allowance on this bag which is fine. But you just don't want to see the little holes. Now, if you're desperate and you have to use it, by all means, go ahead. But where avoidable, don't do it. It's a trap. Okay. So then we need our inside of the bag. So I'm going to line that up with here and the side here. So I'm only going to waste this little, tiny little section here now. You'll notice that I go back and forth with the pen. A single line tracing around it isn't dark enough to see on this fabric, so I kind of need a little bit thicker, which is what you can see me doing. So then I'm not going to put this here because that's going to waste that whole section there. So I'm actually going to come all the way over to this side and do it up against this side. Because again, that could be a whole panel in certain things that I make so that that would almost fit um, half of the demi wallet so you could get the demi wallet pieces out of in there all right so that's two of those one of those and one of those all right 
So I think that's it. So now we just cut that out. Now, because this fabric's got like some little flecks of gold in it, I'm actually probably going to use gold hardware. Just, you know, to keep in trend. Rainbow hardware would also be really cool, but uh, they forgot to pack all of my zippers in my order. So I am now have to wait for them to show up. Okay, so I'm just going to add it to my pile, which is slightly off camera. Don't be afraid to move your fabric around if you need to. And also, keep your hands out of the way. These scissors are very, very sharp and they will cut you, which is not ideal. Um, if you have made this pattern, so, so this is the first time I've ever cut this pattern. I haven't actually made one before now. Um, but if I decide that I really like this pattern and I can see it selling well, I will end up making it out of MDF board. So this is part of the Celine by Swoon. This is, I love this bag. This is my personal handbag. So I got Hubby to cut it out of MDF. So you just trace the pieces on and then he cuts it out with a bandsaw or a jigsaw. I got him a bandsaw to make it easier. Um, so I always start by laminating the pattern, even though I've never used it, because it will make it easier to cut and trace it which means I'm more likely to like a pattern. I haven't really come across many patterns I dislike um, but some of them have a lot of pieces for what they are and so I tend to not make them to sell. I'm happy to make them for like personal use and presents. Like the camera bag for example. The Camille camera bag by Swoon. I will not be making that out of MDF because I don't see me making enough of them. I will happily make them as a custom order, but I'm not just going to make some to stick on my website. So that will never make it to an MDF pattern. That will stay as a laminated one. Whereas the Lynette Business Bag by Swoon, I use it a lot. I know I do a lot of Swoon patterns. It's one of the first um, pattern companies I come across. Here's another one, the Dariol uh, by Trixus Design, the backpack. I have not yet done it, but I need to trace it out onto MDF because I plan on making a lot of those backpacks. All right, so I'm just gonna fold this back up. I just like them to be neat. And so now we're heading over to the iron. All righty, so you just kind of swiveled. You didn't really have to go far. You're still sitting on my cutting table. Uh, so this is a non-woven extra heavy iron-on interfacing. Uh, I do sell this on my website. It is also known as FormView 1600. Um, but I don't call it that because technically mine's not called that. Because uh, that's a Charles Parsons name for it. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to lay it down with the glue side up. And then I'm going to start at the edge and get as close to that corner as I can. So I want to make sure that that, because I know that's straight, that goes along there. And then it's just going to touch up the top there. So I'm going to lay them this way. You could also lay them that way if you wanted to. Put that one next to it like that. So I line them all up first before I start ironing. And then I'm also going to interface the little zipper tab part because I've only used a, a woven lightweight fabric. So then this is just baking paper. Um, I just buy the cheap one because I do go through it a lot. I'm not sure if you can see in this lighting, uh, but the center is slightly discolored. So this piece hasn't got much longer to go, basically, because I'm slowly burning it. Uh, so I tend to hold my iron for about four to six seconds and then move it down. I always start with the edge piece. Um, if you're finding that it's slipping at all, um, you don't have to slide it, you can just put it on and then lift it and put it back down. 
Um, you'll find whatever way works for you best. Um, I actually lift up most of the pressure, but I just don't lift it all the way up. So I don't slide it like that. I kind of take most of the weight and then slide it down. And I do try and use as much of the baking paper as a whole as possible. Um, and even though there is no glue here, I still don't want to put my iron on it because you sometimes get glue. So if you, if you miss this, I'll show you what happens. See those little black spots on my iron? They are bits of glue because I was trying to be sneaky and get close to the edge and then it gets on there. Um, so I actually need to clean my iron. That's not, they're not too bad. It has been a lot worse. One day I just totally missed and the whole thing was covered in glue. That was not a fun day of cleaning. Uh, but to get it off, you can get stuff called iron cleaner. I actually just use orange, orange power. I don't know. It's like this big and it's got, it's literally made of orange, but it gets um, glue and sticky stuff off. So I just use it on a, a cooled down iron. If I did it now, it'd be way too hot, obviously, because it's on. So I'd turn it off and then leave it for 20 minutes and then do it. But because I've got the baking paper, even though there is glue on the iron, I can still continue on with my day. All right, so now that I've done that, I just want to check mainly the edges because it's usually the edges that I don't leave long enough because I get impatient. Um, so you just kind of want to feel around the edges and see if anything lifts. If it doesn't lift, your ironing's done. Now, lots of people don't like this method. I do find it a lot quicker because I haven't had to trace out the interfacing. So I'm actually just going to cut it off as a whole. So I just cut around the edge pieces. Um, so now it's more movable, maneuverable, whichever way you want to look at it. And then you can just cut it up again. Now that I can kind of move it where I want, it's much easier to do. Uh, this pattern is actually possibly a little bit harder to see where the join is. I just, I can tell. I have very good eyesight. Um, but if you've got like a directional pattern, put these in opposite directions so that you can easily see where the joins are. Would be my advice. See, by cutting it off, it's much easier to maneuver around. So we're not finished with these pieces. We still have to do the fusible fleece. But I like to cut all of this off first. Right, so then those pieces are all beautifully cut. And then I take this little scrap, so of that whole piece, that's the only scrap I've got. I'm going to throw that out. I have no use for that. And then I pack this one up and I'm going to get out my lining interfacing. So for my lining, I'm using the woven iron on, also on my website. So I've got a personal roll for me and then I have a separate roll that I sell you guys so that I don't get them, get them confused. And also, because otherwise I'd have to waste stuff every time I um, square up the edge. Okay, so I'm going to start on this end because it's higher. So I always like to start from the high bit and work my way down. So I'm going to put that one. So again, this has got the perforated holes. So you'll notice I'm not going all the way to the edge. Um, and you don't have to put them all in the same direction. It actually doesn't really matter. Mm. I suppose it doesn't really matter at all. So I'm just going to iron those three down, and then I'll come back and place that one on, because I'm going to have to shift this. Ugh, my roll of interfacing was on the cord. Uh, so my iron, before anybody asks, because I know you're going to, this is a Singer 
ironing system. They had them at Spotlight um, a few years ago. It's like a $500 thing because it can hold two litres of water and you can um, double it as a garment steamer. So the steam that comes out of this is intense, which is why I burnt my hand that one time. Um, I didn't pay $500 for it. I waited until it went clearance and I got it for about $150. Uh, totally worth it. I would definitely do it again. Hopefully this won't die on me anytime soon. Um, it sits on a rubber mat and this is actually a very heavy iron. So my mum who has a bad shoulder can't lift my iron because it is like a solid chunk of metal. Uh, which helps. It means I don't have to put pressure on the iron. It's doing it for me. So it, it ultimately is saving me, I guess. I'm not overly methodical on how I iron this. I just don't start from here and then jump to there. I try and go in a direction per piece uh, because... I don't want to get like a lump in the center. So I'm just going to slide this up and then readjust this so it's flat. That's the only downside, it's not quite wide enough. Um, but the iron's physically attached to the ironing board, so I can't just go and make some kind of awesome fancy one. I'm just going to bring that down and put this here like that. That's what's going to work out best for me. Um, but yeah, so I always try and work from my top, like work from the top down. Because uh, you'll find you'll get more use out of it, I suppose. And again, if you wanted to, you could lay your pieces on here and cut around them. But I find the medium woven is actually quite slippery and hellish to trace and cut. So this just kind of takes that hassle out of it. I definitely think this is quicker because then once I cut around this it'll be stiffer where I need to cut because it's got the fabric and the interfacing but you don't have to do it this way if you want to cut around it and then iron them together then you use the heat press uh, you can't use the heat press while doing this though well you can but it's awkward so I don't uh, my heat press is mainly for um, interfacing vinyl so the back of vinyl and I use it to put all foam on because it's glorious and squishy. Okay. That's why I need to leave that on. We still need to do the fleece. Actually, no, I'm going to show you an alternative to fleece. So I do sell fusible fleece on my website. Um, and for the most part, I do use it. But there are alternatives if you can't get hold of any... Or if you're a quilter and you've got some quilt batting lying around, there are alternatives that you can use. Now the pattern says to cut the fusible fleece within the seam allowances. Um, and so to do that, what you would do is you would print out another round of patterns and then you cut it at the dotted line because that's the size that you want to make the fleece. Um, I am actually going to show you what it will look like if you don't take it out of the seams. And because I'm using this, I don't actually think it will matter. Very rarely do I cut the extra pieces to take it out of seams. Bag foam's a little bit different. I will quite often take that out of the seams because it's extra, extra thick. Um, but fleece, not so much. So if I was doing this with fusible fleece, I would just get the outside pieces, roll the fleece out the same way I've been doing all the other interfacings and just line it on. And then cut it out again, exactly how I'm doing it. Um, we're actually going to go, I'm going to move back to the cutting table in a second. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this clutch. Because I have a lot of quilt batting left over from when I made um, some glorious picnic rugs for my family for Christmas last year. I made them three metre 
um, by two and a half meter, I think it was, picnic rug. And then I backed the bottom with a tarp that I got from Bunnings or tarpaulin, depending on where you live and what you call it. We just call it tarp because Aussies are lazy and shorten everything. Um, and then I bound it with some, I don't know, webbing, one inch webbing. I bound the whole edges. It was amazing. I will try and find a photo and stick it up in my group for you. All right, let's move back and put the fleece on. All right, so the only two pieces you need fleece for are the two, these two pieces here. Um, so again, if you want to fill the pattern in directly, you will just make it a quarter inch shorter all the way around and then fuse on some fleece. I am going to be using instead a basting spray and some quilt wadding because I'm going to get the same effect, but I just, I have lots of, see how I've got all these little pieces? I have a lot of this in my house because it's just left over from a project and that's not big enough to make a table runner or anything. And I'm too lazy to join them all together. So I just don't. So. I just need to shake this up and then on the fleece, because I don't care if I get glue on here, now hold on, my nozzle's blocked. The only downside to this stuff is because it's super sticky, it sticks to the nozzle and it comes off as like chunky glue. But this stuff is safe to sew through, which is why we use this and not an actual glue. All right. You don't want to be too close. Um, if you're asthmatic, maybe do this in a ventilated area. I'm asthmatic, but it doesn't affect me. Apparently. And then you just smooth it down. And voila! So this is what I use in a lot of clutches. Sometimes I use fle fusible fleece. It just depends on what I feel like on the day. And I know that sounds really bad, but... Some days I remember to use this, and other days I'm like, ooh, quick and easy fusible fleece. Iron it on and off we go. So, there's no right or wrong. You just smooth it down, make sure it's all flat, and then, where are my scissors? Ugh, I left them on the ironing board. Now grab your scissors, and just cut around it. Now I didn't use this bit, because this bit's got all like weird dirtness on it. Otherwise I would normally put that up against the edge. But I don't want the weird dirtness in my clutch. That's pretty much how that goes. And the reason we use some kind of padding is what this is going to do, in my opinion, this is why I put it in, because you can quite easily leave it out. It gives it a nice weight and it makes it, makes it more protective of whatever's inside. So if you only had the fabric and the interfacing and you had your phone inside it and you dropped it, it's more likely to break, but because we've added this little layer of padding, it's not huge, it's not bag foam, so it's not insanely thick, but it's just going to give it a nice feel, in my opinion. Again, feel free to ignore me. And then just trim off that corner. So because this isn't thick, I'm not worried about this being in my seams at all. So then we've got the interfacing. Oh, it's just fluff. The other bit had dirt. This is just fluff. Anyway, so that's all the pieces. So now all I need to do is grab the hardware and then how I would store it. If I was going to have like a day of cutting, I use these giant Ziploc bags um, and then I just put all the pieces in. So before it goes into my little black tub, of things to cut. I will also add the zip that I need and then all the hardware as well. So the zipper pulls, magnetic snaps, everything like that will go into the bag and then because this is little I can actually seal the bag up once everything's in it and then chuck it in the tub and so then one day when I feel like having a day of sewing I've got all my things ready. Alright, well that's the end of this video so my next video will be sewing this bag. Bye guys!